you ever see stuff you can't explain. This came from somewhere else. Oh, freedom, we're all going against the wind. Life elsewhere in the universe is virtually a certainty. CIA monkey business. That was awful strange. So we're, we're getting into some crazy, crazy shit today, everyone. Yes, hello, my name is Laura. Hi, that's uh, Long Dick Laura. I'm Talia. I don't actually have a long dick, everyone, in case you're confused about that. Um, and welcome to Take Me to Your Dealer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Take Me to Your Dealer, the podcast all about aliens, UFOs, and shit. And some stuff. And yeah. feces. We're getting into the the big boys today. This is the biggest boy I think we've ever done. I mean, this yeah. is fucking, this is the grand daddy. Uh, this is Roswell. The Roswell, Roswell incident, baby. to be precise. And this is kind of like what started it all. Like, it's definitely yeah. the most famous UFO crash bodies thing that's ever been talked about. I mean, you know? And there's a lot of reasons for it. I think uh, basically what happened is that in 1947, something crashed into the desert just outside of Roswell, New Mexico. And it immediately was picked up by newspapers saying uh, that a flying saucer had crashed. And this is when people were really concerned with flying saucers. So it actually died down for about 20, 30 years and then was picked back up again and became like a national sensation because there's so much eyewitness testimony. There's hundreds of eyewitness testimonies that we can get dive into later. And so much so the government had to come out and actually explain what happened yeah they released like multiple fucking reports like just trying to explain it away and like literally calling the report like case closed like roswell (laughs) case closed stop talking about it and it's just they would ultimately come out with three separate yeah lies exactly three separate piles of shit (laughs) trying to feed us all kinds of nonsense yeah. And if you guys have ever, um, if you ever want to go on a road trip, you can head down to Roswell today. And it's like this like huge, today. Cr- right now. Yeah, go. It's a cute little town. They got some UFO themed buildings and the whole place is just dedicated to aliens. And I think that kind of like. I haven't they've, been. Well, we ought to go. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think there's just been a bunch. It just basically entered the lore in the United States. So it's yeah. very well known, but I think the story is not nearly as well known. The actual nitty gritty details of everything, like it's way more complex and complicated than I uh, initially thought when I was researching this. I was like, oh, yeah, Same. Roswell, that'll be a walk in the park. It's just like some fucking guy saw some shit and then government lied about it. Yeah, but it's like. There's it's so such a mess. much. There's so much disinformation. <laughs> There's so much uh, just contradicting information, and 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 there's bodies. There's a oh, bunch there's of bodies. alien bodies. There's some bods. There's some hot alien bods. Just they being didn't sound nude. hot to me. <laughs> they the, sounded really sad. Actually, I, yeah. I got a little sad. Yeah, that's true. We can talk about them. We can describe their bodies in detail later. Yeah, but let's, uh, I want to kind of start by just going over like what was going on like in America at this point, like in 1947, like set, let's set the scene. All right. You know, it's 1947. It is peak hot UFO summer. You guys might remember from our other episodes. Right. Yeah. Never ends. Everyone has UFO fever. Yeah. People are looking for the alien titties left and right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for at the at the left titty and the right titty and the middle titty, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um. So you'll remember, like June of nineteen forty-seven, the Kenny Arney sighting. Yeah, the Kenny Arn. You know, he's our old boy. We talked about him before. Um, just to refresh. Yeah, he saw fucking nine UFOs dubbed i don't think he himself dubbed it but yeah that's like where saucer like flying saucer came from was like his witness report so that set off you know a a whole like flurry of other sightings um this was also like you know world war ii had just ended soviet union was collapsing atomic bombs were fucking blowing up left and right again like the titties communist wait what (laughs) what 
Oh, they were blowing up left and right like there are left and right titties. I thought right. you meant like titties were blowing up everywhere. Uh, well, yes. I mean, we could definitely have that image in mind as well. That's what I okay. like to think about. Okay. Um, but yeah, communist paranoia was growing in the US. Like everyone was just like on edge like all the time. Like yeah. it doesn't sound like a great time to be alive. Okay. So <laughs> we're going to get into the night before the crash. We're on July 1st, 1947. Is that also where Independence Day starts? Um, the movie? Yeah. Isn't it like, it's like when that's flying over the moon, it's like July 1st or like July Oh, 2nd probably. Yeah. They definitely did that on purpose. So that was for yeah. sure like a, an homage, as they say, Sorry, to, I just thought of that. to the shit. Yeah. They knew something. Um, um, so anyway, yeah, it's July 1st, 1947, night before the crash. Uh, a bunch of radar stations throughout the area start picking up weird objects moving at speeds and maneuvers that they hadn't seen before. Um, in Roswell, in the White Sands military base uh, nearby in Alamogordo, mm -hmm. freaking them out. Oh, yeah. There's also the uh, sighting over Mr. and Mrs. Dan Wilmot's house. They said mm. they just saw a UFO. Okay. Um, why not? Yeah. Why not? So there's some there's some shit going on in the area. Yeah. You know, it's something's a bubbling, right? There's <laughs> a, a palpable, visceral uh, tension in the air. And yeah. uh, let's bring on the scene 48-year-old um, Mac. Brazel. Yeah. Let's paint the picture here for Mac Brazel because Mac Brazel is a farmhand. He's working at the Foster Ranch in the high desert outside of New Mexico. Yep. He lives in a shack without any running water. Gross. He's just doing his thing. No, how I'm did sure he, it was nice. How did he wash his butt? He's off grid. He doesn't need to wash his butt. He's not impressing anybody. That's He's just true. living for himself. Okay. Yeah. Now he did live that. with like a wife and kids out there though. Do you think he liked uh, the song Return of the Mac? Because it was about him. Do you think it was about him? I think so. Shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I imagine he's like walking around. He's like humming it while he's like hanging out <laughs> at his house. Yeah. And yeah, uh, it. there's a severe lightning storm this particular evening. Scary. Spooky. Yeah. And he hears like a crash that he says like really stood out from the thunder and lightning. He's just, you know, interrupts his humming and he's like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> what the like, fuck was that? <laughs> and just leaves it for the next day. Next day, he wakes up. He goes out and checks because he's, like, got his sheep out and he's trying to walk them. I don't know. <laughs> Is that what you do? Do you just you just walk <laughs> sheep, like, on a leash? Like, I don't know. I, I guess. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah, of course. They got to yeah. walk. So he they discovers that uh, they do. They need to... They do need to use their legs. That's they're always fat. I don't know if that's just the wool or I think it's their the actual wool. body. But uh yeah, so he discovers a large area of wreckage, right? Mm. About three quarters of a mile long Wait. and a couple hundred feet wide. That's crazy. It's so much wreckage. That's and a lot of wreckage. The sheep refused to cross it. Just like fuck now. Oh, mm -hmm. they could tell that something was amiss something weird sheep always know you know i've always said that <laughs> sheep always if you keep know. a sheep in your house no surprises exactly they will alert you to any kind of weird going going ons so yeah he's out there sheep won't cross he ends up kind of leaving it for a little bit uh there's <laughs> one giant like 10 foot piece i think he ends up taking into his shed maybe that was the one he was like except that guy <laughs> Yeah, He's this mine. is this is my guy. This is my special, my special little piece <laughs> of this weird but, thing. <laughs> but this is the thing with Mac Brazel is that he like doesn't care. Like he lives in this shed. He doesn't know anything about hot UFO summer. Mm -mm. He just he doesn't, uh, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. No, at all. aliens no. aren't like an alien could come down and knock on his door and he would not care at all. He's like, I got he's sheep got to shed. walk. Yeah, <laughs> they're I gonna, gonna walk sheep to walk. I can't be all caught up in the fucking <laughs> UFO bullshit. Yeah, he can't. Yeah. So he just leaves it. But eventually, I guess after a couple of days, he's like, this is getting to be an issue. I get he's in charge of this ranch that he's working on. Right. And he's like, I can't clean this shit up. Yeah, I can't. I'm one right. man. I don't understand so why he, he wouldn't immediately think that. But all right. 
I don't know, maybe he thought someone was going to come by and take care of it. He's like, someone left this there. I'm going to leave it for them. Yeah, yeah. So it's someone else's problem, always. Yeah. Yeah. So he heads into town, and this is now July 5th. Day after. Oh, yeah. He had to celebrate Independence Day with his bros. He had to fucking get sloshed and celebrate the birth of our nation. Right. Right. Yeah. So he wakes up. He's probably hung over from a full night of celebrating and he heads into town, whatever the closest thing that means is, and um, starts talking about this to people at the local bar. And I guess that's when someone was like, hey, um, there's aliens out here now that you've been living out there. And if you can like find evidence of a crash, you get like 3000 bucks. Oh, shit. And this kind of piques his interest. Wait, who told him that? Just some dude? Some dude? I don't know. <laughs> some fucking know? guy at the bar. Oh, yeah. You get $3,000 if you get rid of got our UFO debris. It's like, <laughs> he's just making shit up. Now, there's probably a <laughs> logical true? explanation. Yeah, it's probably true. Why not? Let's believe it. Um, so, I guess, by all accounts, he heads back to the ranch, gathers some stuff up in a shoebox, and um, heads into Roswell. On um, the, I don't know. I guess the same day. <laughs> when does he? When does he talk to uh, Wilcox? Yeah. So he gathers all this shit up in a shoebox, and I like to imagine him like picking through the debris, like trying to find ones that look really nice because he wants his reward. It was really a shoebox. <laughs> yeah, he brought in a shoebox. Wow. Full of weird alien metal. That's that's an odd uh, carrying device. I was always. Imagining it like um like a stick with a bag tied to the end of it, you know, <laughs> and he was just like it just seems like that kind of guy that, that would really be cute. into that. And he's just, yeah, bringing my alien stuff to someone who cares, <laughs> whoever will care. Someone's gotta see this. Yeah. Well, he heads into town and just tries to find the local sheriff. And right. in this case, who is uh sheriff it's Wilcox. I forgot his first it's, name. It's, it's Sheriff. It's Wilcox. George. 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 Wilcox. Yeah. Fucking George. All, um, of course it's George. There were only like three course. names back then. Yeah. So of course it was George. It was like Had George or Dick or Tom. Tom. And it's, not, it's not Dick or Tom. So it was George. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Well, George is out of the office this day and he's oh. on his, he actually has a day off. So he meets like the good for George. I fucking yeah, and he deserves it. He does deserve some time off. I don't know anything about him, but on his day yeah, off like he, this. he works hard, I'm sure. So he, uh, the deputy calls him up and is like, hey, there's this guy down here. Says he's got some alien parts, I guess, or something. I don't know what he said to him. But <laughs> Wilcox comes in on his day off. And you can just imagine he's like pissed as fuck. Like he doesn't want to be dealing so with mad. this shit. Yeah. Like, oh, I gotta he's deal like with enjoying some breakfast fucking with his family. Insane man who's bringing me some bullshit on my day off. Like, uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. And he actually takes a look at look at a looks at the box, a look a look at the box, and he just doesn't. What's in care. the box? <laughs> Did you say that? Uh, yeah, I like to imagine he made a reference to a '90s movie. <laughs> um, and he uh, he ends up like yeah, he just doesn't care about it. But he ends up getting a phone call from Frank Joyce, who is a reporter from. Um, KGFL radio okay. and he's just calling up Wilcox asking if he has anything to report on that day must have been like a really slow news day a really slow day that's a very odd yeah. thing to do <laughs> I guess that's what you do in small towns yeah okay I could I could see that I mean times were tough back then you know yeah you had to yeah. call people and shit on the phone it's very odd yeah. <laughs> and of course Wilcox and like one of, I guess, just the most like fortuitous events in history is like actually no, but why don't you talk to this this schmuck over here? Because I don't know what else to do with him. Mac Brazel and, um, hands the phone over to Mac Brazel. Damn. Yeah, and so Mac Brazel starts like telling him his story about his shoebox full of alien stuff, and um, Joyce just basically is like, yeah, this uh, if. I don't know what you got there, but if it's anything that fell from the sky, you need to be calling the local Roswell air airfield base. 
Roswell Army Airfield Base. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I always whatever. got that confused because it's like Air Force and then it's Airfield. It's like I guess it wasn't technically the Air Force yet. Make up your fucking mind. I know. Whatever. Is it a force I'm, or a field? I'm gonna call it the Air Force. Is it a force field? They could just say the Force Field Ooh. Base. Yeah, the local Air Force Field Base. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Why not? So yeah, he gets on the phone with them. Yeah, so they do that, right? But George George does it too, right? Mac Brazel and George, like they contact the Roswell Army Airfield Base, uh, which incidentally is home of the 509th Bombardment Group, which is an insane group of bros who uh, <laughs> tested and deployed atomic bombs during World War II. Yeah, they dropped the bombs. Yeah, like they dropped the two atomic bombs. Yeah, Ed Teller is the bomb daddy. I mean, they were bomb yeah. boys. Bomb boys is better. Okay, they were bomb boys. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, okay, so and he then, calls so, up the 509th bomb boys. Bomb boys, yes. And then let's uh, maybe enter the man of the hour, Jesse Marcel. 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 Right. Okay, so basically when he calls them up, he gets in touch with the chief intel officer who happens to be Jesse Marcel. Marcel, he is a great guy. He is a very like decorated veteran of World War II. After, actually, after the entire Roswell incident, he'll end up leaving and retiring and working at a uh, as a TV repairman because that's how fucked up all this shit got to him. Oh. He leads a very quiet life, doesn't speak about it to anybody until 1978. And the entire right. Roswell story we're going to get into here completely dies down after yeah. 1947 it's basically, until... yeah, it's basically on pause there's like all right let's hit yeah. pause in the space-time continuum and then you know pick this up decades literally decades later yeah because in 1978 um nuclear physicists yeah nuclear fucking... physicist and uh professional ufo researcher stanton friedman yeah, gets in a... contact with jesse marcel he's a and... ufo god man he is. Really, like, just made all this all this happen. And at this point, Jesse Marcel is just an old man, so I guess he was like finally willing to talk. Maybe. Yeah, he didn't really have much skin in the game at that point. But I mean, yeah, during his, I mean, he was basically uh, brought on to be the lead investigator of Roswell, right? Like, he was fucking. He went there. He was looking around at all the shit. He saw all like the crazy debris. Uh, he's the one who's brought forward like the memory metal, you know, like the weird, yeah. the weird metal that's like really thin and and smooth. He described it as like being as thin as like a cigarette foil. Even know what? That yeah, is. I mean, we can get into all of it, but he ends yeah. up basically telling all of this to Stan Friedman, and exactly. he's like, yeah, he's not saying anything at this point. At this point, he's just like, yep, just taking it all in at face value like huh this is strange and like kind of saving face because he had to but what yeah, he, he will end up saying this is like right. in the 70s exactly well i mean what well, he actually ends up i mean should we get into it all what he said to stan frieden at the time or you want to just i mean we can talk about it a little bit yeah i mean basically he's uh he's quoted as saying i don't know if he actually said those two stan, stan friedman i think he did but he was basically saying that like this metal that he found um, it was not anything from this earth that I'm quite sure of. And he was an intelligence officer. He was very familiar with just about all materials used in aircraft and air travel. And this was nothing like anything he had ever seen before. Like in all of his like work, yeah. you know, he had never come across anything like this. He fucking brought it home to his wife and kids, like fucking showed his son. His son like yeah, still talks about it. To this day, it's like, why well, I still talk about it? It's like, I could understand, like, you know, you see it as a kid. Like, oh, my dad's fucking crazy. Brought home some, like, foil, trying to be all cool. But, like, clearly it made an impression on him if he's still talking about it to this day. Like. Yeah, right. You know? Of course. So. So, all right. We're going to shoot back to 1947. Marcel yeah, answers this phone call. a ahead of ourselves, but, you know. <laughs> he answers the phone call and he gets in his car and drives seven miles because that's how close this is to the sheriff's office. And when he gets to the sheriff's office, he grabs these two boxes that Brazil had brought in and brings them back to his commanding officer, um, Colonel Blanchard. Yes, Blanchard. He's a guy. He's a man. Yes. Storm. So mm -hmm. both Marcel and Blanchard take a look at this box and they're like, fuck is this shit? No idea. Right. 
Never seen it before. Freaking me the fuck out. Very so strange, he's like, strange shit. Strange shit. So Blanchard is like, you actually better head out to wherever the fuck this guy's talking about and take a look at this because this is weird. I have no right. answers for this. Kind of freaking me out. And not only does he send the chief intelligence officer, Jesse Marcel, he also sends the chief of counterintelligence, Captain Sheridan Cavett, to join him, which I really want you guys to remember because why would you send a person whose main job is to study foreign affairs to a crash site if it was anything the U.S. had any knowledge about previously? Right. Just remember that. Remember like they that, were like, this is yeah. so weird. We need to send this guy that studies counterintelligence to it. Okay. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense if they thought that it was like Soviet Russia. shit, right? Yeah, yeah, Russia, like whatever else. Yeah. But it's important to yeah. remember they they did not, when they looked at the stuff in the box, they were like, this isn't ours, which you wouldn't say if it was a weather balloon. Yeah, if it was sure. fucking like a sticks and rather tough paper, like whatever they say that it, like later on, it like the retracted like press releases and stuff. Like they say, oh, it was just like sticks and and rather tough paper, tin foil and, and rubber balloons. Foil. Yeah, it's like, oh yes, the average person can definitely not know what that is. Like they're yeah. obviously going to mistake these everyday common household items. In uh, my head, I just like imagine Brazil like finding like a children's party balloon on his property and being like, yeah. oh, and like bringing it in and like. Wilcox and and Marcel are all like they're all passing it around like what is oh this? Oh my god, I've never seen anything like it. That's what they all poking sound like. It. Yeah, just poking it, like trying to light it on fire. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. light on fire. And they're just like, like whoa. This no, is just weird. like immediately engulfs the flame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. End of Roswell. We solved yeah, it. Like, okay, that's that's all it was. Um, yeah, so they the two of these folks head out to the ranch. They ranch it up. <laughs> They ranch it up. They look at the shit. They're going through it. You know? Yeah, they're clearly like, this is otherworldly. Like, they they recognize it immediately as being, like, very odd. And so, can we talk about the fucking statement that was released by the Roswell Army Airfield? Well, let's, like, let's get into first, like, what they saw when they got out there. Because okay, they yeah. got to the debris field and it was fucking weird shit. Like, this is... Very weird shit, yes. Once again, not anything weather balloon related one thing that we have basically the things that i'll list now are just things that we have lots of different eyewitnesses reporting because once marcel and cabot get to the field it's now been a few days and like word around town is that something crashed up here oh and yeah like everybody knows other people there yeah. and kids people right. are just grabbing shit oh yeah yeah exactly the military yeah. is very not happy about that no <laughs> but the stuff that they find is like all right. One thing that comes up a lot is small, palm-sized, very smooth and thin, but also very light metal type things. Um, the color of aluminum, and it's so strong that it could not be bent, cut, scratched, or burned at all. Right. But the thing that like uh, confuses me about that is because there's other like witness reports saying that like you could crumple it up and then it would like bounce back into it's a its different type that of was material. like a different metal that mm -hmm. was there yeah that makes sense so the one that you couldn't bend on any level was kind of most of it was kind of rounded almost like it covered an object like it was like right. naturally kind of rounded and then there's another one that was the same type of like extremely light metal but it had like an almost fluid cloth like property to it where mm -hmm. that one you could take and you could crumble it up into a ball but as soon as you like released it in your hand or like laid it on a flat surface, it would go completely flat again. And yeah, this is what they keep referring crazy. to when they say memory metal. Right. Yeah. Lots of witnesses will describe holding this. And like like Laura mentioned before, not just Brazil or Marcel, but like they'll bring these things home to their family and their kids grow up describing this weird exactly. shit to people. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's the shit that they saw. So then what's crazy is that like, yeah, so the Roswell Army Airfield, they issued a statement. Yeah. So basically, I'm just going to read like what the state because I feel like just yeah, to get please. the full understanding of what was going on at this time, what people were 
people at the time like were subjected to like this fucking statement is crazy yeah the many rumors regarding the flying disc became a reality yesterday when the intelligence office of the 509th bomb squad of the 8th air force roswell army airfield was fortunate enough to gain possession of a disc through the cooperation of one of the local ranchers and sheriff's office of chavez county the flying object landed on a ranch near Roswell sometime last week. Not having phone facilities, the rancher stored the disc until such time as he was able to contact the sheriff's office, who in turn notified Major Jesse Marcel, our boy, of the 509th Bomb Group Intelligence Office. And then action was immediately taken and the disc was picked up at the rancher's home. It was inspected at the Roswell Army Air- Airfield and subsequently loaned by Major Marcel to higher headquarters. So it's like, what, dude? I think that's the, I think the disc they're talking about is that big piece that he saw like that first day when he was out walking his sheep and he was like, yes, oh. right? Yeah, no, they're, yes, they're <laughs> talking about the fucking disc and it's like, they're just saying disc. Like, yes, we, we yeah. have that. Disc. It's real. Disc. We have it. It's a thing. It gets picked up by the, um, like, all major news outlets yeah. in the area and becomes right. national news immediately. Because, like I said, like, the whole country right now is, has this, like, UFO fever. And all of a sudden, in New Mexico, every single news organization is reporting that they have a fucking UFO. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's cool. crazy. Great. Awesome. Yeah, no big deal at all. We'll just say this. We'll just, we're just going to say it and no consequences will come of this <laughs> whatsoever. I need you guys to really pay attention to this point because this part starts to get super weird and muddy. Like everything from here on out just kind of explodes. And this is where it's also really important to remember that the information we're getting is oftentimes decades later through multiple sources. So like it's just it's a little confused. It's very confusing. I'm going to try to piece it together as best as I can here. Yeah, it's 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 tough. Bear with us, basically. First of all, and I'm going to skim through this really fast, but... While this is all going on, there's this separate investigation that's happening now, like right around the exact same time that the um, press is releasing a story on Roswell. um, A bunch of firefighters are called in to a civilian report about a crash site and they get there. And so do the police and the military. So this never goes through like word of mouth, anything. It goes right to the military immediately. Mm. And it's a second impact site about 35 miles northwest of Roswell in Chavez County. Yeah, this is crazy. I I didn't find anything about this. This is like very like buried information. But you got this like from a book that you read, right? Yeah. So it's um, uh, Stan Friedman gets into this a little bit in his book. Uh, Also, The Day After Roswell um, by Corso is one that I would definitely recommend checking out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a popular one. Way crazier. Uh, also, um, witness to Roswell talks about it a little bit. It, it, you got to do some digging to really find this stuff because again, this is like very suppressed information because the military got there first and they shut this shit down. Oh yeah. But basically, this was where there is an actual craft recovered, intact craft. They said that was, I mean, surprise, surprise, metallic-y, egg-shaped, featureless whatever maybe some would say tic-tac shaped i don't know oh who would say that (laughs) the craft we keep hearing about over and over again they saw something like this in the desert and the area is closed off for i think five miles they said in every direction you couldn't even fly over it because they had like some reporters trying to go out and take photos of it and they would get shot down if they tried to approach it like couldn't even literally shot and they get fucking shot There's also a lot of reports coming out from this one in particular, and these are high-ranking military officials that would go on record saying this stuff later on, that this is where they found some bodies. Oh. (laughs) There was reportedly – it gets a little confusing. It seems like there was three dead bodies and one alive body trying to crawl away from the crash. Crawling away! That's yeah. so scary. I'm oh, sorry. It's like not okay. Not okay. I don't <laughs> like things that crawl. Like anything. Don't, crawl. don't crawl. Stand up like a man. Brush it off and exactly. say I fell. It's fine. Whatever. I'm fine. I'm an alien <laughs> and I'm, I'm fine. I meant to do it. Exactly. Leave me alone. That's yeah. Crazy. No, it's not okay. We'll get more into this part later. Just I think it's important to know that this was also going on. So 
Yeah. The military at this point, because before it's kind of like, oh, yeah, you found some shit out there in the desert. And now they're like, lock it down. Yeah. Not to mention, too, it's like they uh, did like an insane cleanup job, too. Like in this short amount of time, like they literally cleaned up everything like so impeccably and like because because later like excavation groups would like go out there to like try to find shit and like all they could find was like okay yeah something did crash here but like there's nothing else like they cleaned it up and they have like all kinds of like crazy tools and devices to like find whatever materials like left over even if it's just like an impression of like some material but it's right. like they couldn't find anything like the military did like such a good job of just like scrubbing this site yeah i was reading um stories about people from people later on who were like in charge of like the cleanup crew and basically what they would do is they would like get like a bunch of I don't know, military boys together and they would like send them out in big trucks to the area and they would have them out there for like hours just scanning for anything that looked like it wasn't part of the natural environment. Yeah. And then afterwards would basically round them up and be like, you didn't tell anybody we fucking saw here today. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, see anything here today. I don't even know why I'm here. And they'd be like, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Shut up. Thank you for your service. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, it's like totally fucked. And like, so this is where it starts, though. This is yeah. so we're now at July 7th. Um, and this is when the military is like, we're done. Yeah, they're like, we this has gone too far. Like this fucking statement was a huge mistake. A yeah. huge mistake. We are very, very PO'd about this yeah. statement being released. So this is when Jesse Marcel, the old boy, gets on a flight and he the press is reporting that this flight is headed towards right field in ohio but ends up getting diverted to fort worth oh yeah classic mix star up. star that because we're going to talk about it a little bit later but for now um, marcel is actually getting to fort worth in texas he is seen by someone named lieutenant robert shirky so we have a couple of witnesses on the way Shirky is a former assistant operations officer for the 509th Bomb Boys. He was the officer on duty when the flight was getting ready to head out to Wright Field and Fort Worth. And he actually saw a bunch of men in suits, maybe men, men in, in black, black, some would say. Some would and, say that. <laughs> and Marcel heading onto this flight. And he says that Marcel was carrying this cardboard box in his hand. Was it the shoe box? I don't think it was a shoe. Was it like, the was it Mac Brazel's same shoe box? Like they just didn't get a new box. It says Brazel on the side of it. Like <laughs> it's just his his old shoes are still in it, like with the other shit. I've never seen anything like this before. Exactly. Uh no, but he he says that it like bothered him for the rest of his life because he couldn't he was just so disturbed by what he saw in the box. And it was like a um non-reflective aluminum like piece of scrap metal it had it was like a small eye beam he said with weird pinkish purplish hieroglyphic like markings on it and oh, other people yeah. from the crash site said that they saw things that had like it was like hieroglyphics without animals just like weird symbols they've never seen before in pinkish purplish writing so this stands up and he saw marcel get on the box with it i like i like i like that they like pink It's like they could have chosen any color. Like maybe they have like different colors that like we don't even know about. And they're just like, yeah, pink. We're going with pink. Well, maybe it is a different color that only they can see. And Tessa looks pink. Mm, Good theory. (laughs) Um, So Marcel gets on this plane with his special shoebox. (laughs) And he heads into Fort Worth to meet with uh, Ramey. I I forgot to get anything else about Ramey. Fucking Roger Ramey. Uh, so he was uh, the general of the 8th Force in eighth Fort Worth, Texas. The 8th eighth, eighth, eighth Force Field. 8th Force Field. <laughs> yeah, Texas. part of like that whole like uh, the Air Force 509, like all that shit. You know, he's like part of that. Yeah, so he he's going to come up later. But yeah, he was basically like the general of the 8th right. Air Force. And, uh, and I actually saw a report saying that this is like, like on record, like before Marcel actually got to Ramey's office, Ramey had already put out a bulletin saying that it was a mistake and they had actually found a weather balloon. So oh, really? which is really oh. weird because he's like coming with the, the shoebox filled with party supplies and he's already he's telling just, everyone. 
He's just playing mind games. He's just trying to fucking. I really think that Raimi had something personal against uh, Jesse Marcel and wanted to just embarrass him in front of the world, which he ultimately did. Oh, no. Yeah. So you think like uh, Marcel had previously embarrassed Raimi? Maybe there was some kind of like drama that had happened between them before. But um, yeah. So, yes, he got to the place. He was like showing all the shit. And Raimi just pantsed him. Yeah, Raimi pantsed him and said, like, this shit is fucking rubber strips, tinfoil, rather tough paper, as they like to say, and sticks. So basically just saying, like, this is all not actual what like this is weather balloon stuff you know like this is not yeah. any kind of alien material uh we're gonna make you jesse marcel pose for a fucking embarrassing humiliating photo where you yeah. have to hold up the obviously like fake like the tinfoil shit like you're such Which an he idiot did. yeah he and did. that is like that is the famous roswell photo but Marcel's story is different. He says that he came in, yeah. he had the shoeboxes filled with cool shit, leaves them on the guy's desk, and then Raimi's like, come into this other room here and show me on this map exactly where this debris field is. Right. She's like, yeah. mad sketch. Never go into someone else's room to see a map. You bring the map to me, first of exactly. all. Exactly. That's, that's, that's a good tip for our listeners. Yeah. Life tip. Yeah. And when they come back into the main room, of course the boxes had been replaced. And Marcel says he just walks in and is just like, the fuck <laughs> yeah 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 right exactly and so then it was like suddenly all like the school supplies like whatever yeah like, school supplies. all the shit it's just fucking it's construction just scissors paper. and a ruler yeah. <laughs> it's like you idiot you it's fucking just so misidentified and so um <laughs> i know we joke around about it but it's so frustrating because it's like, so frustrating how could it go through so many fucking people for yeah. days and then this Ramy looks at it and he's like i've seen scotch tape before yeah, Come it's clearly on. fucking paper clips. It's you know, yeah, it's a, it's a, um, a binder. Yeah, nah, yeah, a ruler, a ruler. Fucking yeah, just paper. Uh, yeah, to just insult his intelligence like that, like you know, like he said before, like I know what this shit looks like. I have never seen anything like this. Like this, yeah. I wouldn't just make this up like i wouldn't just bring this to high ranking officials like and right. risk embarrassment if i like you know you have to be fucking crazy to do that and so, yeah. also i was reading that roswell they released two weather balloons every single day yeah and everyone in roswell knows what a fucking weather balloon looks like so even if you were really confused by what tinfoil looks like on the ground and you were like what is this weird metal mm-hmm. somehow like Brazel knows exactly what a weather balloon is if he saw a crash weather balloon, knows. he'd be like oh shit this is a downed weather balloon clearly everybody knows weather balloons were like all the rage back then everyone knew it was not like any kind of secret right. so yeah again you know they make him pose for this humiliating photo and he looks Poor humiliated Marcel in the photo looks humiliated he's just like well i guess i'm just a big fucking dumb guy like can't recognize construction paper yeah and, here i uh, am your clown yeah your clown just fucking throw tomatoes at me and so he's actually on record uh saying jesse marcel he's saying all i could do is keep my mouth shut and general ramey was the one who told the newsman what it was and to forget right. about it basically and it was nothing more than a weather observation balloon but of course we both knew differently Right. So it's like Marcel wasn't backing down years later. You know, he was just like that guy. He knew exactly what was going on. He had invested interests. He was just trying to clown me for, you know, taking his girl like years before. So, yeah. And uh, (laughs) for taking his girl. (laughs) Yeah, I think that that's what happened. I think that's why Raimi like was the hell bent on embarrassing him because he's like probably took his girl. I mean, Marcel. I like to think sounded like like Chad. They were in like military school together and he just like pantsed him in front of a group of bros or something and like yeah thoroughly embarrassed him pantsing was a bigger issue back in the day you don't really hear about pantsing anymore i think it needs no to we need back. to pants more we need to pants more pants. people you know people learn and and grow that way mm-hmm. so on july 9th now the military who's had mac brazel in their custody for a couple days now just doing god knows what bring him up to the local radio station and have him recant his story online wow. on air. He online. says that online <laughs> go on the message boards. <laughs> this is the computer. Board. Yeah. He says on air that all he saw was a bunch of debris from a weather balloon 
common materials like scotch tape, tin foil, just random bullshit. And he then is taken from the station to confinement for another five days, according to testimony from his friends and family. Yes, that's right. The whole time he was not, no one spoke to him about this shit He was detained, man. Yeah, he Mm -hmm. absolutely was detained. Seems like a lot of effort when all you realized is that you saw a weather balloon. Don't know why they would do that. No, all the locals were harassed. (laughs) All of them. All of them. Although not all the locals came back with a brand new fucking truck. That's true. They were like, hey, return of the Mac. Brazel, do you (laughs) want to maybe have a shiny new truck and a shiny new business? Like he like started a business after that was, I don't know what the business was, but like, yeah, basically he was able to quit being a rancher. Like, you know, no fucking heat, no water guy, no wiping, no washing his ass guy. No. Uh, and he, he became sure like he washed his ass. Stop it. He became a you know a a, a businessman. Mm-hmm. You know, he mm-hmm. left that world behind. So that's a little for suspicious. Sure. They for sure it paid him suspicious. off. Yeah, but yeah, like like you said, the military was just fucking around with everyone at this point. And at this point too, they were really going after the press. First of all, you remember our old friend Frank Joyce? He's the one that had originally talked to Brazel in the sheriff's office and told him to call the Air Force. He apparently had a bunch of interviews with Brazel. It wasn't just that one. He called him a few times. And like in one of them in particular, Brazel starts freaking out about the alien bodies he saw and said that they smelled real bad. Ew, I don't know why he had to like... say that. I don't know. I Maybe he was like self-conscious about his own smell. And he was like, now nah, they smelled real bad. Though. Yeah, he was just smelling himself. Um, <laughs> yeah. So basically he was like admitting to everything, like totally just like no holds bar, like talking about what he saw. And then uh, the interview actually wasn't aired. Right. Is no. the same thing that you're talking about? Yeah. It wasn't aired because the FCC and U.S. Senator Dennis Chavez, uh, they actually called the radio station and told them fucking you better not. You better not like yeah. bury this shit. They said they take away my license. Yeah. We will destroy you. I also read a story um, where Frank Joyce would later say that he, they did him even dirtier than that. They brought him out with his boss at the station to a shack in the middle of the desert. Oh my and God. Um, there he met Brazel and Brazel was like, you're not going to run this story. Right. And oh he was my like, God. okay, Poor because Brazel. originally, originally Frank Joyce was like, he said he got like a random call from like the Pentagon and they were like, you got to shut this down. You're not talking about it. And he was like, you can't tell me what I can and can't talk about. So they mm-hmm. had to like do the dirty work. And he said that when he got back to his station, um, it was like totally ransacked and all of his stuff was gone anyway. That's Which so also crazy. like, do you think that, do you think you, if you were like a news reporter at the time, do you think you would have been like, you can't break me? you don't don't own me um i don't know i feel like because like social media wasn't a thing back then there was literally no consequence to like any of your actions so it's like dude the fucking military could just harass whoever the hell they wanted and this was just brings up like another point this what all of this was corroborated by apparently like the foster daughter uh, i don't know her name of colonel hunter g penn he was an army air force officer uh who admitted to his daughter that he was tasked with enforcing an information blackout with a focus on little bodies so on the right. little bodies, he was like hell bent on no mentioning that, like hiding them, doing his best to cover that shit up. And he was actually authorized to use force and weaponry Ooh. if necessary. <laughs> yeah, no, they like definitely threatened people's lives with this story. Yeah. Um, I saw also um, just another example of the news not being allowed to say anything. Linda Sleppy sleppy i know i feel so bad that's Um, not a name she was the secretary for koat coat in albuquerque and she got a call from the general manager of sister station ksws in roswell and like this sister station like needed to rely on koa to transmit to the associated press like wire service Mm. and so he calls her and he's explaining that about basically all the UFO shit in Roswell. And he's like super excited about it. And he's like, you need to alert the ABC News headquarters in Hollywood that there's this really big story coming in. And he's talking like, he's like, get this. They're saying something about little green men being on... Sorry, 
they're saying something about little men being on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, she is like super excited. She's like tra- starting to transmit the story and she can like hear her arguing in the background. And he's like, hold on, hold on. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. And while this is going on, she's getting a message on the teletype and it's from the FBI. And it's oh, in, it says stop communication immediately. It's like attention. Stop communication immediately. National security matter. Whoa. And, and she fucking did. Just, and that just, was the end just of it. Just weather balloons though. Just was, weather balloons, though. It was, it was just weather balloons, though. So fucking stupid. So, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of other reports like this from yeah. many people. That's literally the exact tip same of the dick. That's tip yeah. of the dick. Tip of <laughs> reports. Just the tip. So there's also a bunch of reports about the military going around the area and ransacking people's homes for all that debris that they were getting into before. Yeah, they were like convinced that people like stole some of the debris. And so they like and they did. They did. Yeah, they for sure. How could you not? Wouldn't you? I fucking would. I would. I'd be like, yeah, aliens. I totally here. would. But I also was thinking earlier about how like if I because at first in this situation, like when I was listening to like the Frank Joyce stuff, I'm like, no way. Like if somebody if I saw aliens, I'd be telling everyone I'm like, you can't fucking silence me. But like, I think I could be silenced like immediately, to be honest. I mean, if I was I was if I were to get a shiny new truck and my own business like fucking Mac Brazzle. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah, I didn't see a damn thing. Who's to say how strong I would be? At that Who's point? to say I can see anything over that shiny new truck? <laughs> shiny new Ford pickup, nineteen forty-seven pickup, like yeah, the cream of the crop of trucks. <laughs> yeah, they actually like they even went to Brazel's house and um, his kids testified to the fact that like they completely ransacked the place and even like tore open bags of grain. Oh like my they God. just weren't, fu- which I think like bleeds a little bit more into like the intimidation thing like it wasn't just that they were searching for it they were like don't you fucking mess with us yeah exactly. um they threatened people's lives you think this is a game is what they said yeah <laughs> and sheriff wilcox also went around and like gave personal death threats to people oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah i mean he had to save his own ass right yeah he did end up retiring and not entering the force ever again the force i thought this was funny though because it was just like this nondescript like well he didn't have a name but there was just like this uh report of like an angry red-headed captain who was threatening everybody (laughs) like there's like all these witnesses that like say the same thing it's like just this angry (laughs) red-headed colonel captain guy was just fucking like threatening us all he doesn't have a name he doesn't have a name he was just red-headed and angry that's it (laughs) great that's fuck the that only this <laughs> yeah, fuck that redheaded guy. I don't know what his name was, but he had red hair, so Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I'm sure that was rare back then. Also on the 9th, 10th, and eleventh of July, the um Army Air Force Field sent a bunch of they staged a bunch of weather balloon photo ops all across oh. the u.s to kind of be like, look. See, this happens all the time. What weather balloons are. Yeah, to try to like not only quiet shit in Roswell, but also just like the UFO fever in general. They were like, we're done. Right. No more hot UFO summer. All weather balloons. We are Always. obsessed with weather balloons. That's the only thing that we do. Yeah. That's all we do. That's it all It was like see. a public relations campaign. They were like, meet your weather balloon. Meet your weather balloon. You will love weather balloon. Weather balloon is yeah. your god. Yeah. Um, but I want to like, and again, uh, this worked. This totally worked. People were quiet about it. They were scared. Like even people like decades later would that we know were there would be asked about it. And they were like, oh, I I don't know what you're talking about. They would just no one said anything for decades. Right. And the press didn't care anymore. The press was like, oh, it turns out it was just a weather balloon. We all look like damn fools. Yeah. And they forgot about it. But Mm -hmm. I want to like backtrack a little bit here and just quickly get into the um flight we talked about when marcel was supposed to be heading to uh fort worth uh, that yeah. yep. original flight to Wright field was not canceled they told the press that it was canceled and he instead went to fort worth but there was two flights that went off that day and we know that this flight went to Wright field because we have so much data about it so much information so many statements it was definitely there and this is where it gets 
fucking nuts. Like up to this point, you might be like, oh yeah, like there's some crazy metals and shit. Like this is insane. So right field is the home of T2. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. This is so crazy. I don't know how much you guys have been paying attention to our podcast, but T2 we've talked about before because it is the um, foreign tech division at right Right. field that's charged with back engineering captured equipment, captured weaponry during World War II. Not speculation here. This is like really what it was used for. The head of T2 is none other than General Nathan F. Twining, Twining, who would start Project Sign. Like all this debris ends up heading over here to T2, which again is super fucking weird because let's say it was a weather balloon or some super secret government program. Why would they send it to an airfield that's across the other side of the country specifically to study its technology? They were 100%. They knew it was fucking aliens. They were so just like paranoid and just so in, only interested in just covering it up and yeah, just squashing it so that they could privately, secretly study it. But yeah, all of this evidence is just, it's, I don't know, it's just too intense. It's too overwhelming. Yeah, you there's know? a lot. There's a lot. There's and there's much. like, oh, like the witnesses over there, like they say crazy shit. Like, Colonel Robert T. Friend, who would go on to direct Project Blue Book, he was working there at the time. And he said, um, quote, pieces from Roswell arrived. It was no weather balloon or any balloon by design. We all knew that at the time. Speaking of Blue Book, like in their like final report, right, like after they like disbanded, uh, um, there was actually no mention of Roswell. I thought I always right. thought that was really crazy. Like they didn't actually even include Roswell in any of their like official investigation reports, right? Yeah. I mean, I think because Roswell was like legit, like they, f- they found freaking aliens at Roswell. It was too hot. It was yeah, too so hot. hot. Yeah. I honestly believe firmly that what happened is all of this went down. They recovered this alien craft. They sent it over to T2 to study it. They got crazy tech out of this shit that they decided they needed to fucking study. And that's why right. they started. That's why Twining went on to start Project Sign that same fucking year because mm-hmm. he was like, we got to get all this UFO shit together. This is oh not yeah, flying fucking, around out there. It was like the microwave and shit like came about this yeah. sh- like around this time. It's like they all kinds Kevlar, of yeah. fiber optics. Yeah, all this wild technology that we never had before. Just suddenly there was a huge boom in that, like, during this time. Yeah, okay. So should we talk a little bit about Stanton Friedman and just kind of, like, the decades later, like, kind of... So again, like we mentioned, it paused, right? Hit pause. No one talks about it. But then it was, like, revitalized in 1978. Right. He basically just um, met with Marcel... And Marcel gave him this fucking wild ass story. Yeah. Yeah. He goes really in depth. He interviews other witnesses, high ranking military officials. um, And he actually called it a cosmic water gate. Like with the amount of um, information that he found, he fucking was just like, yeah, he he just believed that this was a giant, giant, giant cover up. Right. And he writes this book about it that becomes like a national sensation and becomes so popular that um like unsolved mysteries ends up picking it up yeah and like yeah it becomes like very ingrained in like popular culture at this time too like in the 80s like in early 90s like which like spawns all these other investigations too yeah yeah and so then basically at this time the u.s air force is forced to release all these reports so this is when like right. the, the train of reports then starts coming out to kind of refute everything um and so the 1990 the 1994 report that was the first one uh it basically says like okay yes we did cover it up we did but it wasn't aliens still like yeah we were assholes we covered it up it wasn't aliens it was actually this top secret military operation called Project Mogul, which is like just such bullshit because it was like, oh, it's not, it's not a weather balloon. It's not aliens. It's a bunch of weather balloons. It was a it's, bunch of weather balloons together. It's a super crazy, fancy, 
spy weather balloon uh basically that we created to narc on the soviets you know right they were like, like detect radar activity yeah. they're but- testing like nukes and missile launches and shit like yeah so they were testing apparently over uh roswell during the summer of 19. 19- but the whole point of Project Mogul was that they were going to use such common devices as a weather balloon to detect this stuff. So, like, right. it would still be a, a crazy weather balloon, but it would still be your common everyday weather balloon. It was basically just three weather balloons in a trench coat. Exactly. Yes. And it was nothing like it was still like human material like it's still like not the memory metal that like was described by multiple people like it was like we clearly can't do that like that's not a thing that happens on earth like right (laughs) we can't do that no like project mogul was super top secret at the time but the stuff that goes into project mogul was not top secret at all it was no crazy tech at all exactly yeah and wasn't it declassified in like the 60s or something so like there's no reason right. that they would have continued to intimidate these witnesses their entire life and they like couldn't come forward about it. It's like never speak about Project Mogul, even though like this it was in the fucking 40s and no one cares about it and it didn't do anything. It never worked. Yeah, it's such bullshit. I mean, yeah. And so then like they did like an audit or something like in that same year, 1994, and then released like another report in 1995 called the Roswell Report Fact versus Fiction in the New Mexico Desert. And basically they did, uh, or who initiated it? Uh, uh, Stephen Congressman, Schiff. Yeah, Steve Schiff, Shifty Schiff. Shifty Schiff. No relation. Uh, and he was just like a known UFO skeptic. Like he was just like, nah, this shit, this shit is fake. And I'm dedicating my whole life to just being a major like buzzkill. And so, yeah, basically the audit just supported the theory that debris found in 1947 was, in fact, from a balloon used in Project Mogul and that there was no evidence of aliens. Um, And then the report also said that Marcel and Blanchard, our boys, their original press release was just an overreaction. And the term flying saucer, it was a new term, didn't have a clear meaning. They were just, you know, kind of could have meant anything. Yeah, they were literally meant a flying dish. So yeah, they, were just, they were just caught up in the times and like flying saucer was just all the rage. It's like yeah. Beatlemania or something like. But this report also uncovered that all of the documents pertaining to Roswell at this time had been somewhere down the line completely destroyed and no one knew oh, by yeah. who no one knows by who or why they did it. Exactly. Yeah. So basically um, from January to October of 1947 all records of that like it they were all destroyed yes and there was no like authorized because usually there's like a memo or like just some kind like somebody has to authorize like if there's ever a destruction of any records or official like government files you can't just burn all of the government files this isn't a movie (laughs) this isn't a fucking game like you just you don't burn shit dude yeah so that shit's wild my favorite though my favorite is the 1997 report called the roswell report well because because case closed stop talking about it stop asking about it we're closing the case (laughs) <laughs> because obviously when they said it was just three weather balloons in a trench coat, everyone was like, fuck you. No, it's not. Tell me the truth. Yeah. What was right. it? What was up there? And especially people kept saying, what about the bodies? What about the bodies? Everyone saw bodies. There's so much. We didn't even get into it. There's so much testimony with people reporting bodies. There was like a nurse who worked at the military facility who talked about the bodies. There's like people who were at the crash site who mentioned bodies. There was like a funeral home director who said he was called about children's caskets. (laughs) Just weird shit. And all of the reports from people who like claimed they saw bodies said the same thing. And these are people who like weren't talking to each other. This like wasn't public knowledge. They all described the exact same small childlike four, four feet. feet tall they were like four feet specifically remember four that feet. because three, they said this, three to four feet but smaller than four feet so tiny like a little With baby massive heads giant yeah. eyes and like they said they were so unnaturally skinny little slits for a mouth like a fleshlight <laughs> no i little, hate that you just said that <laughs> little fleshlight mouths no um <laughs> yeah so it was like so everyone was like what about these aliens with the fucking fleshlight mouths someone needs to talk about this and exactly. so they did 
they did talk about it. They're like, okay, fine, case closed. Okay, fine, case closed. You're right. There were bodies. They were they were uh, <laughs> fucking dummies. They were dummies. dummies. It was like, so basically uh, the military was testing the effects of parachute jumping. It's like, this is just like, like what? Like at this point, like we don't know like what parachutes do to the human body or something. So stupid. So they were just like, throwing these dummies out of planes and seeing like what happened to them just for fun they were just having fun like in reality this is what Um, happens when you create a system that is like almost entirely men exactly yes (laughs) they're all male dummies too nobody talks about that (laughs) they were all male dummies that's the real fucking where were the female dummies where were the female dummies this is we're just not represented in anything (laughs) these days but yeah so they were dropping them and this was but but they said that this was in like the 1950s not the fucking same time as roswell by the way it's 10 like, years that was, later exactly it was 10 years later but the air force is just like oh, oh well, well you know that it's just because the witnesses were mixing up the timelines they just didn't know like yeah they blamed time compression right yeah they but were no just one like, None of these reports of bodies are of people being like, oh, I saw this like weird lump of body on the ground. Like the reports are like, I saw someone crawling. I saw I a know. I saw a body open on a medical table. I saw like this person being carried off in a, in a stretcher, this creature being carried off in a stretcher. Like you're telling me that they put a dummy on a medical table, that the dummies crawled, that the dummies were on stretchers. Like make it just make it make and sense. And the dummies me. were six feet, dude. The and dummies were six, were six feet. feet. It's like you can't like four feet versus six feet is pretty substantial. Like you're not going to you're not going to like mix that up. You know, it's right. like a, like confusing a child for an adult. Like that doesn't right. happen. It and doesn't like happen. on such a consistent level of like fucking whatever it was, like 600 witnesses having like, you know, all the all of these like all the same description. And um, their witness statements too, like most of these are given on their deathbed to family members where they're like they just have to tell the truth before they die and they're like look i saw some crazy shit out there and it scared me my entire life and you're gonna say that about a fucking dummy yeah it's so stupid um yeah so like you were saying yes everybody like was kind of admitting to this much later but you know it was like other shit was happening it wasn't like having the same cultural um you know, mainstream news effect that it did at the time. But my favorite is uh, Sergeant William C. Ennis. He was a flight engineer at the 393rd Bomb Squadron uh, stationed at Hangar P3, where the crash debris was apparently brought. I think right. maybe the bodies were brought there too. Um, so initially at the time, he was like, oh yeah, it's weather balloons. Like He was on, you know, team weather balloon. Of course he had to be or else he was going to die. Uh, but in 2008... He actually admitted. Um, so, yeah, he must have been on his deathbed, probably almost dying at least. Yeah, they're like, uh, what can admitted, you do to me? I'm already dying. I'm old I'm as fuck. I'm already dying. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care. But he was just like, it It was a spaceship. It was. It was a spaceship. After all these years, yeah. I still don't know how that ship flew. There was no engine. Before I <laughs> before I go, I would like to know. That's what he said. It's like. Did he, and he didn't. And no one told him. No one told him. But before no he went, him. he would like to know like so poetic or something before i go i'd like to know just want to know how it works <laughs> no one told poor or poor anus poor anus um yeah he would not know we still don't know and to be honest with you guys we probably will never know because everyone will never know the full details everyone's yeah, just exactly. dying and the government succeeded congratulations congratulations air, air force field you guys did it no one they cares anymore win. they don't give a shit about us <laughs> i did want to talk about the autopsy film just a tiny bit i know I hate you hate it. it i know you hate it but it's like it's relevant it it's does disinformation. matter it's okay. just disinformation this was released in 1995 by london-based entrepreneur ray San- santilli um sure, sure. yeah uh, so basically it, it was like an authentic autopsy done on one of the aliens it was like supposedly a female alien that was pregnant uh i mean you can look at this video it's like very disturbing it's really not like a pleasant thing to look at it definitely looks fake but uh santa santilli santanilli i don't know why i want to say santanilli it's santilli uh he says that okay fine 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 it's not real but it's a reconstruction of what i did see 
Um, so he actually did see some footage, apparently, uh, by a retired military cameraman who like wanted to be anonymous, but was just like, hey, like this is some shit. Like, you know, do with do with this what you will. Uh and the but he claims that a few frames of the autopsy uh were real, but he didn't specify like which. So it's like, I don't know, is it, is it the actual autopsy that's real or or what? But um it. Yeah, it was like actually really funny because when I watched the video, it was like they blurred out the genitals. <laughs> it's like, come on, you don't want to. That's not fair. You don't want to like see them. I need Have to see. Respect. I need to see the genitals. I need to no. know what no. a what an alien vagina looks like. I'm There's just no like I'm just like Bill Clinton. I like <laughs> to think I'm so much better. I need to see that alien vagina and understand. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he was commissioned by Bill Clinton to make the video. <laughs> Honestly, it's it it's completely fake. He said he faked it, and uh, that's all. He I said it about. was a reconstruction. It sucks because, yeah, but people like ugh, people like think that this is a authentic Roswell video, and then they look into it and they realize it's been faked, and then they're like, "Oh, all of Roswell's fake." And it just I feel like he's a disinformation agent. I know. I'm not my art. I know it does suck. But you know what? Whatever. Actually, okay. So my, uh, I just wanted to mention this also briefly. Uh, this is one of my favorite theories of like what it all actually is. Um, do you know any Jacobson in her book, uh, uh, Area Fifty One: The Uncensored History of America's Top Secret Military Base? Tell me about it. Okay, so this book came out in two thousand eleven, um, and so basically she claims and. This is kind of bullshit because I don't know. Basically, it's all like based on just interviews, just like either second or third hand accounts. It's not like completely credible, but it's an interesting theory. And she just basically talks about how um, the alien bodies that were seen uh, at the crash sites, it was actually like a whole almost like War of the Worlds scenario that they were trying to create to like stir up chaos and and craziness by joseph mengele and like fucking yeah, nazi I shit did hear people about yeah so um it was just basically like they produced like these grotesque child size aviators to, oh, okay. yeah just basically to fool us into thinking that right. like there's ufos and aliens but it's actually like these these Children, freaks, these these freak children that they just created, um, and they wanted to kind of cause like a similar hysteria to like the War of the Worlds. You know how that caused like such a panic during that right. time. Um, they wanted to kind of uh, yeah, basically like induce the same like paranoia hysteria like to disrupt the country. Right. You know. Okay. But, but like, obviously, it's just crazy because like, she's not really like about aliens. Like, of no, course. she's never really like, it's all about like, just whatever the, the government cover up is like, she's kind yeah. of like an anything but aliens type of person. Too, I mean, to so. jump through that amount of hoops to get here, instead of just <laughs> admitting that it's clearly aliens, like, I just don't understand why. Like, it's so absurd to people that we could possibly be visited by another society that they would mm. make up weird grotesque child mm. test dummies in some yeah. sort of secret nazi takeover plot like are you kidding me it was just aliens stop it was just, it was just why are we aliens. doing this relax <laughs> relax your balls everyone <laughs> aliens come on so, so... main conclusions <laughs> main conclusions it's fucking aliens again are you really yeah. surprised at this point I think point. we're I think we're pretty agreed on this one. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not the fucking crash test dummies. That shit, no. get that shit right out of here. No, it was bodies. It was alien bodies. It was a alien spaceship, and the government took it and studied it, and we have tech from it. And that is, I firmly believe that is the truth. Honestly. Yep. So once again, yeah. you know, thanks a lot, Daddy, Daddy Gov, Daddy Government, yeah. for fucking, you know discrediting all all these people that you know saw what they saw and yeah it's just it's bullshit so yeah yeah that, that's it that's all i have to say i'm done that's all i have to say i feel up. like i feel like you guys are probably pretty solidly bunked on this one by now mm, mm. Yeah. how's that bunk, how's that bunk juice taste tal how's it taste <laughs> oh 
It tastes like <laughs> grass for some reason. Yeah, it's grassy. <laughs> it's, it's a little grassy. It's pretty, uh, pretty um, dank. <laughs> well, thanks Ew. for listening. Thanks, and guys. <laughs> yeah, hey, if you want more rockin' hot content, you know, we're all about that. We got a Patreon. We do. Join us. And you can find us on all of our social medias at TMTYD Pod. And is that also our Patreon link? It, yes, I believe so. I haven't, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know these things. <laughs> Okay, I love you guys. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs>